Actor Woody Harrelson is known for his fun, good time, weed smoking, bongo hitting attitude. In the 80s and 90s, he became a huge star and success on the small and big screen. At some point, people started to ask, What's up with your dad, Woody? <laughs> Once we scratched the surface, we found there was a dark history at the core of Woody's family. This week on Death and Entertainment. Live from Los Angeles. 911, what is your emergency? Here in Hollywood now. Two counts of murder, injury, and death. Oh my God! Shocking new details that has stunned the entertainment world. Um, this makes me a little nervous. The hair stood up on my arms. Just like in the movies. Ah! What do you call this thing, anyway? Death in entertainment. Um, so as I was saying in the intro, like Woody Harrelson's known for like his fun, good time, weed smoking, bongo hitting attitude. Um, a he lot played of, bongo too. Yeah, he did. He he was a bongo hitter also. Sweet. Yeah, him and Matthew McConaughey just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they get wild in the middle of the night in Austin or Hawaii, whatever they are. <laughs> Wasn't all they were hitting. Okay, hey. let's move on. There was an incident for real in 1999 where Matthew McConaughey was caught banging bongos with another dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were both naked. Well, well, I remember that report, and no one said that it wasn't Woody Harrelson, so we don't know. Oh, that, it could have been him. That was in Austin, actually. Oh, that's what you were talking about. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. All right, well, I think it was him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't ready to make that claim, but clearly you have no apprehension. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Um, Woody Harrelson, uh, we know him now from Cheers, you know, Ed TV, bad movie that he did with Matthew McConaughey. Um, <laughs> That's the one you come up with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, White Men Can't Jump. He had a small part in No Country for Old Men. I don't know if you guys remember that one. Uh, he has a mm-hmm. good he has a good mix of like very serious stuff, um, like natural born killers, but he could do cheers also. I've never seen Another actor with range like this. The range on this guy. Yeah, it's insane. That's why Oliver Stone chose him for Natural Born Killers from Cheers. Because he's like, nobody that cheery and naive doesn't have a little darkness in them. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. Uh, well, they they work together there for Natural Born Killers. And actually, it's funny because there is a multi-cam portion of Natural Born Killers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, which is very dark and disturbing and involves Rodney Dangerfield. I recommend you go see the movie if you have not yet. Yeah. You can also see it on our Patreon bonus episode. Hey. Yes, that, we that portion. We analyzed that portion of the movie. We did, yeah, and it's very disturbing. Um, but No Country for Old Men will come up later. In this podcast, in a very juicy way, and uh, I can't wait for it. Ooh. Um, so, let's get into Woody Harrelson's history and background before we get into uh, his father. Um, he was born in Midland, Texas, uh, July 23rd, 1961. His mom, Diane, um, who was a secretary, uh, pretty much supported the entire family because um, their father was off. <laughs> being an apprentice of some sorts, uh, <laughs> trying to do other things. Um, Is that code for unemployed? Unemployed, but you know he was, he was you know trying to find a new career and not a very good one. Nefarious dealings. Yeah, very nefarious dealings. Yeah. Uh, the father is Charles Void Harrelson, middle name Void. Ooh, that's a weird middle name. You're entering the <laughs> void. <and> yeah. <laughs> Um, he was barely around during Woody's childhood. Um, clearly, he had more important things going on, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, Woody was raised a Presbyterian. He had two brothers, Jordan and Brett. He grew up very poor. Um, after his father, Charles Void Harrelson, left the family, they moved back to Mom Diane's hometown in Lebanon, Ohio. Lebanon. Lebanon, yeah. I think there's a worse Lebanon they could have moved to. <laughs> I know. At this time, it, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> What's with all these Midwestern <laughs> towns that have these yeah. Yeah. crazy worldly names? Yeah. Because the, what's that one in? It was in Ohio. Yeah. What was it? Where the killings happened. Oh, Idaho, Moscow. Yeah, Moscow, yeah. Idaho. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's always like Fallujah, Indiana. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a Berlin, Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So at some point, uh, the the 
dad, uh, Charles, just left the family, and the couple were officially divorced in 1965. Um, I, it just seems like they were mailing paperwork back and forth. The, they just they just didn't work out, and the, the mom was like, I'm going to go back to my hometown with my kids, and that's going to be it with yeah. this marriage. Um, there in Lebanon, Ohio, Woody attended high school. Um, he kind of flourished there. He, he did very well. Um, you know, met a lot of friends, was like the class clown. Let me do it before. They're like, uh, Woody, do your Elvis. And I'm like, kidding me, this place is packed. I can't do my Elvis. And they're like, well, just do it quiet. <laughs> they convince me. And so I'm like, I start off kind of soft. Oh, well, bless my soul, what was wrong with me? I mean, like a man. That's really good, actually. It's kind of hack to do Elvis impersonations. You know, yeah. In the middle of a circle. It was fresher the then, too. Yeah. library, including the librarian, has gathered around, and they're, like, clapping. <laughs> and at the end of it, it was unbelievable. Like, everybody unbelievable. was applauding. <laughs> and the feeling of that, like they say, that feeling that you get from that applause, that's what makes you say, this is it. Yeah, he's he, only a little bit stoned. Yeah, he there. sounds like he's a little bit stoned all the time. <laughs> it sounds like he just completely made up his own accent. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, that is not It, it doesn't anywhere. sound like the usual accent he <laughs> no. has. He's like a new accent. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, like they recast him or something <laughs> just for that interview. I thought you were going to say made up the story. Yeah, well, yeah. that could be too. <laughs> that could be also. Uh, so after high school, Woody Harrelson attends Hanover College in Hanover, Indiana, where he studies theater in English. While there, he was a member of the Sigma Phi fraternity, uh, and he became friends with future Vice President Mike Pence. That's so weird to me. Could you could you see those two people hanging out? Yeah, <laughs> I don't see them in the same room. Yeah, he's holding Mike Pence's hair back while he pukes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, Mike Pence but he had has long, room, hair, yeah. really long hair at this time. Yeah, he had like long dreadlocks. <laughs> yeah, he thought he was like the second coming. Of G. Yeah, dreadlocks. Yeah, he's playing fucking frisbee golf and stuff. <laughs> and they were still white back then for some reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're still white. <laughs> white dreadlocks. That's like yeah, in like a sitcom where you flash back to two guys and it's like it's just them with a, a wig on or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So I wonder if Woody, you know, supported his friend in his political endeavors. I doubt it. I don't. I, I don't hear much else about that. He just acknowledges that they were friends and they knew each other. But I don't think he followed. Um, well, Mike Pence. People don't know about this with Mike Pence. He was like a right wing radio host for. He was like a Rush Limbaugh, but for Indiana. For really? Years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And that's what he did, and until he became like a, um, I think a co- local local congressperson in Indiana, and then governor. That's so funny. Yeah, That's he was like a hack, like, you know, we got we got Dave from Raleigh calling in. What do you say, Dave? <laughs> He's like, yeah, man, this Clinton guy's a piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> He's turning the, the country into Muslims. <laughs> He's and like, you caller, said it. Amen, brother. <laughs> caller number 10 gets tickets to Leonard Skinner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like he's giving away tickets to monster truck rallies. And yeah. stuff. Like, <laughs> it's just hard to picture him as a radio host because he doesn't seem to have any personality. None. But I, I, you, I don't know. He got away with it, I guess. He just kind of bullshit his way through it, probably. Anyway, yeah, this is not the Mike Pence podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> it it could have been one if Trump uh, had him take it out that day on January sixth. Mike Pence used to look like Chris Parnell. Oh yeah, he does. <laughs> what the hell? Oh wow, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, that yeah. is. I, all right, he, he looks like a little bitch. <laughs> 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 so he was a human at one time. Yeah. yeah. Seemingly. Yep. <laughs> um, so wow. w- so and- anywho, Woody <laughs> graduates college in 1983 and immediately moves out to L.A. to pursue acting. So at Hanover, he was part of like the the, um, you know, the acting program and stuff. And that's kind of really what he was focusing on. Yeah. After crushing with that Elvis impersonation in the library at his high school. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, he goes right out to L.A., starts acting. I mean, I'm kind of angry how quickly he, like he his career just kind of got kickstarted. Yeah. Um, Sometimes it's just like that. You just 
get the first you thing and bang fire. it off to the races. Yeah, yeah. or you, you 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 know tinker around for the rest of your life. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot more possible. Yeah, exactly. And Maybe uh, word of that Elvis impression. Yeah, got yeah. Around. That was his like uh, he submitted that tape out there, and that's what <laughs> that's what got him an agent. Yeah. Well, he, yeah, you're c- the Elvis guy. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> um, so yeah, he gets an agent right away. Uh, you know, he gets all set up, and you know, he's got a bunch of friends that came out with him from. Um, Hanover College, so you know he's seemingly doing pretty well um, for someone who just kind of came out to LA on a whim. You know, fatherless, kind of like you know, poor family. It seems mm. like things are doing a lot better for uh, old Woody here. Anybody famous in that bunch that he went to? Not really. They seem like not. Re- you know, aside no. from Mike Pence. My, yeah, Mike <laughs> Pence, is, but he's not part of the crew that oh, comes yeah, to yeah, L.A. Yeah. You think Mike Pence? Maybe. What if he did? <laughs> and we just don't know about it. Some of these. Guys, like I heard Steve Bannon was like a failed screenwriter. Same thing with Ben Shapiro. Oh my God. A lot of these kind of right wingers do make an attempt, but they don't want, they hide it. Yeah. You know? Ben (laughs) Shapiro secretly wants to be a comedian. Oh, big time. And it's so cringe when he tries to be funny on purpose. Yeah, he ducks like this fast and he's like, well, you know, objectively, uh, you know, it's (laughs) it's not really a funny delivery. Yeah. He (laughs) he was talking about Jesse Smollett and he was like, Jesse Smollett. And then he paused for laughter. He's just like using the the Dave Chappelle joke and yeah, like exactly. taking it as his own. These guys are hacks. I don't. I don't want to talk about <laughs> any of these right wing maniacs. Any, I, I'm the one who talked about it. But anywho, <laughs> you brought it up. So back on track with with Woody Harrelson here. Um, he's at like a, a sort of a crossroads because he gets uh, offered a to be an understudy uh, on Broadway for Biloxi Blues, uh, the Neil Simon play. And he's like an understudy, so you know he shouldn't have to stick around there. Um, but he does, and like that's that's just a job he got. I I don't think he was like really pursuing, you know, stage acting, but it's what he had a history and experience in, and wow. he got that gig. But he's out in New York, and his friend calls him back in L.A. and he's like, um, he says, um, he's like. I just auditioned for this role for this this new TV series uh, called Cheers. Yeah, you know they're looking for a very dumb guy from Indiana. I think you'd be great for you'd it. You'd be perfect. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you they're idiot. looking for the dumbest guy in Indiana, uh, <laughs> second down from Mike Pence, and I yeah. think you would really <laughs> nail this part. And uh, but I think Woody Harrelson's like he seems like he rolls with the punches. You know, he doesn't take things uh, too offensively. Yeah. So he uh, work is work. Yeah, he was like. For a moment, struggling, thinking, like, what do I want to be a Broadway stage actor, which, you know, go the more Philip Seymour Hoffman route, mm. or just, you know, go right into multi-cam sitcom comedy, which is way more fun, way more easier, way, yeah. because you only have to, he, you're, he's like the third lead in this show, and, you know, it's a half-hour show, yeah. and you only have to memorize a little bit, of, I, I, I would kill people for this gig. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All he has to do is turn around to have a softball launch. He knocks it out of the park and then he goes back to washing a cup. Exactly. Like, that's yeah. It. And he's millionaire. He, he, it's just so s- flawless for him. It it's yeah. comes so easy cuz he, he is this character and he knows these people so much. Uh, you got to do this show. But you You had never seen the show? I, you? I'd never seen it. And then I watched uh one or two episodes and I was like, yes, this is a great show. Oh, yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. You took over that role, right? You're right, because the coach yeah. died. Yeah. The... Oh, coach died. That's right. Yeah, I forgot yeah. all that whole history of that. Oh, that's right. The show was already on the air. Yeah. Yeah, it was three years old. Were already. the people who hired you for the play pissed off at you that you called them up and go, hey, I'm not doing Biloxi Blues? No, they were pretty good natured <laughs> about it. They said, hey, Howard always wants the drama. Yeah. I'm on a hit television show. We got Matthew yeah, Broderick on the had phone. That conversation. That was the agent. Yeah. Right. That, that was a great gig on Cheers, huh? It was oh, unbelievable. The best. All those guys are so fun. Was it hard to memorize all those lines? Do you have trouble with that? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you laugh at me when I say that? I find that the hardest because thing in the world. I was the supporting role on a, a 30 minute sitcom, was, and <laughs> yeah. I had a week to memorize. It wasn't, wasn't hard at all. I, mean, <laughs> yeah, I, <think> that, <laughs> <laughs> I like how he answers earnestly. Like, yeah. that's a ridiculous question. Um,. So wow. he stays on Cheers for eight years until its end as the biggest show on television ever at that time. I I don't know if that was bigger than MASH, but either way, the final show had 
93 million people watching. Whoa. I believe it's number two to MASH. Okay, maybe And then there's two. Seinfeld. Yeah, okay. 40% of the U.S. population at the time was watching the finale. Including sure. me. Oh. Cheers. Yeah. I watched it. Yeah, I think I did too, because right oh. after that was like a big gap of like entertainment until mm-hmm. NBC kind of re-stepped up their game in the late 90s with must-watch TV with Friends and ER and Seinfeld, obviously, and and <laughs> the single. What was that horrible show with uh, Jonathan Silverman? Was it the Jonathan Silverman? The show? single guy. Yeah, they tried that guy out. They gave him like three seasons. He was terrible. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> now I'm going off on a tangent. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I grew up with Cheers, but only the later seasons with Kirstie Alley yeah. and Woody Harrelson. So it blew my mind to know that there were years of this show in the early 80s with this different cast. Yeah. With, with Co- Shelley Long and Co- and I guess the guy's name is Coach- Nick- Nicholas Colasanto. Yeah, Coach Mancuso, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and he died in real life, and then that's when the second wave of Cheers started. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, because, yeah, there was Shelley Long, Mm-hmm. Uh, was the original love interest. She was in the pilot. The entire pilot premise is she comes in, uh, she's going to be running away with a married man, and she's waiting for this married man to come get her so they can go fly off to, like, South America or something. And the entire pilot is her waiting there, um, and then at the end of the pilot, she actually eventually goes to work at the bar. She's like, I got nowhere to go. She goes to work there. It's a will they, won't they between yeah. her and Ted Danson. And then Shelley Long leaves. I don't know why. She, she left leave. to pursue a movie career. Oh, yeah. She was in um, Outrageous Fortune. Yeah. And uh, a bunch of movies. And The um, Money Pit also. The Money Pit, Which yes. is not bad. No, that's a good movie. Yeah. And the Brady Bunch movie. Oh, oh yeah. Which Kyle saw in the theater. Woo, yeah, woo, and woo, woo. you booed or what? You were what happened? You weren't supposed to be seen or something? <laughs> no, oh, my stepmother called me gay. Okay, <laughs> for wanting to see it. I'm regretting that I asked immediately. <laughs> Kyle's very damaged. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Kyle's on one today. <laughs> I thought I had trouble. Yeah, and Kelsey Grammer used to be on one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, he was on a lot of code, Maybe but one that, or two. That's an, another episode. That's a whole other thing I can't talk about right now. Um. So yeah, as we know. <laughs> <laughs> Woody Harrelson goes on to have a legendary TV and movie career. Um, you know, White Men Can't Jump, like I said, Natural Born Killers, yada, yada, yada. Indecent Proposal. Indecent Proposal. Huge hits in the yeah. night. Kingpin, one of my favorite movies. Kingpin, not a huge hit, but but it no. was one of the funniest movies I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Oh, it's it's one of the best comedies, like studio comedies, I yeah. think. Yeah. And Woody Harrelson, you mentioned the range earlier, not only from light to dark you know, in terms of subject matter, but also in age. Yeah. Because in the same movie, Kingpin, he convincingly plays a wide-eyed 20-something. Yeah. And then a grizzled old middle-aged guy. washed-up guy with a, with a bad comb over it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It ranged even within one movie there. Um I like when the dad says to him, you were on a gravy train with biscuit wheels, kid. (laughs) 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 And you cut to him like washed up in some shitty Rhode Island uh, hotel like drinking with vodka bottles everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) And his name is Roy Munson. (laughs) And throughout the whole movie, people use his last name as a verb. Yeah. Like, we're munson out here in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like, what does that mean? He's yeah. like, to, to, to be in the middle of nowhere without anything? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Upper Creek without a paddle, like the you Webster's know. Webster's title. Um, <laughs> so once Woody starts getting big, people start linking his dad to him. They were like, there was honest questions. Once you get to a certain level of fame, People are going to start like poking around, wondering, okay, what's under the the hood here? You know, yeah. Um, Who's your daddy, and what does he do? Yeah, uh, it turned out Woody's dad had been in federal prison since he was six years old. Well, that's Whoa. nice. Yeah. So that's kind of not a very nice thing to have to say in an interview. Yeah. <laughs> if, if Conan asks you that, you like that you gotta have out it on the Conan O'Brien twelve thirty show. Yeah. Um, I have a video here. I think this is one of the. First time this comes up with Barbara Walters. How you feel today, what the story is today? Well, he is in prison right now for uh, the killing of a federal judge. Um, No big deal. It sounds bad when you say it like that. uh, Trial, especially because the guy who supposedly hired my father to commit the murder was uh, later acquitted. 
went on a retrial. Woody, do you think your father is innocent of that second murder? That's what I've heard. I'm not saying my father's the same, but I think he's innocent of that, yeah. Are you trying to have the case opened up, trying to have it investigated, trying to set him free? Well, um, let's put it this way. I haven't given up hope. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said once that you thought that your father was a CIA operative. Yes? Yeah, he was. How do you Come know? Come on. Proof? He told me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I shouldn't get into this right now. Okay. This is where we're going to get into trouble. Uh, but this is something that you feel and that you're trying to work on? Oh, I know it's true, but, uh, you know. Does it make a difference? That he was trained by the CIA? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it makes a difference. Yeah. Hell yeah! Okay, so he, he, he <laughs> just opened up a whole bag of worms there that we'll have to we'll have to examine. Yeah. He showed me his card. Who? Oh, the, yeah, CIA, <laughs> yeah. Central Intelligence yeah, Agency. It's like federal the, the, booty inspector. The mail room. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's official. If you have a business card, we yeah. find if you have three thousand business cards that says something, it's 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 law. Um, okay, so. Who was Woody's father, Charles Harrelson? Uh, was he a CIA agent? Uh, let's get into it here. Um, his dad, uh, Charles Harrelson, was born July 23rd, 1937. He's got a birthday coming up. He was born in Lovelady, Texas. Lovelady. Whoa. Uh, Texas has the craziest little town names. We love them ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Love Ladies. I'd like to make a town called like dedicated to loving ladies. <laughs> <laughs> That's so on the nose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like if they had a place called Rifleville. Yeah. <laughs> I did drive through an area of Missouri that was called Knife Country. Ooh. Yeah. Or Knife County or something. What Stick it was scary. Out. Yeah. I, I I hit the I hit the gas a little bit harder when I when I saw that sign. <laughs> Once he's 17 years old, he joins the Navy and serves until 1959. In the Navy. Yeah. yeah. Um, does he stop serving his country after this? Is he no longer in any sort of armed forces for the U.S. government? We don't know. Hmm. Uh, it's kind of murky there after that time. Um, after the Navy, he moves to Los Angeles, um, much like his son, but he would not go into acting. Instead, he would go into being an encyclopedia salesman and a professional gambler. Mm, it's more is, lucrative. Yeah, that's yeah. a that's a different business card altogether. There, eh, it's the same grift. I feel like though. What CIA? <laughs> no, just like <laughs> instead of getting into the em entertainment industry, he's like just a real grift. Well, yeah, the, yeah. The chances are about even. About yeah. <laughs> to be fair, though, these are the days before the internet, so that was actually an important. Thing to have in the home, an encyclopedia collection. Okay. So you would need salesmen for You're that. really sure. advocating for this uh, trade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, while in Los Angeles, Charles meets his first wife, Diane, who is Woody's mom. So they meet in Los Angeles, which is uh, kind of romantic. Yeah. Yeah, maybe on the pier out there, they, uh, they were both fishing or skateboarding or something who knows <laughs> lifting weights <laughs> yeah they were both lifting they were Venice both Beach. very greased up weightlifting people <laughs> 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 like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey I like your body I like the way you uh, do your tries there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he's like <laughs> pumping is like coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His dad said that too. That's yeah. that's where Arnold got it in that accent. Yeah, yeah he had yeah. the same uh, German accent. Um, after getting married, Charles and Diane they moved to the Houston area where Charles is from. I guess around Love Lady somewhere. Um, Love Lady. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, who is that character now? The guy from Love Lady. <laughs> yeah, I'm the mayor. <laughs> I'm the mayor and the plumber. I'm the mayor. Yeah. <laughs> Love Lady <laughs> mayor here. I also happen to be the plumber and the exterminator. <laughs> and the gynecologist. <laughs> yeah. I'll, and if, I'll bring my tools to the gynecologist. I'm, I'm not licensed for that last part. <laughs> <laughs> and if you need something done, you call me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a phone, though. So but I got a wrench. Yeah. <laughs> and a wrench. Uh, that, we can go on that guy for a while. That's yeah. like, that's like a whole other show. <laughs> um, back, now back in his native area, Charles seems to have dev uh, devolved deep into the life of crime. Ooh. Uh, right away in 1960, he was convicted of armed robbery. 
Um, Charles Har- uh, Harrelson later admitted that he had been involved in dozens of murders for hire beginning in the early 1960s. Dozens? Dozens. So he's claiming he killed a, a bunch of people. Yes. Well, he eventually d- he gets arrested multiple times, and I think one of those times he like I don't know who he, he's admitting this to that has not been confirmed. But I'm wondering if the police like interviewed him and he admitted to that, um, and it was part of a plea deal or something. Uh, I, I don't know. I that part isn't confirmed to me. And could they have coerced him into saying that? Um, that's possible. I don't know. They. they well, I'm a, you're going to find out very soon. The Texas justice system is bonkers. Yeah. Everything going on, even with the FBI down there, it's like it's really out of control. <laughs> like, uh, like they, it, they're really doing whatever they want to. And it's really um, there's no order down there, basically, especially in the 60s. So which makes it very interesting to me. Uh, especially in lovely what happens Girl, in the early go. 60s and especially around the JFK assassination. Ooh, so that's right. That that's, was Texas. This is go- that's going to come up very soon. Um, so it's around this time in the early 60s that Woody's actually born, where his dad is like just starting to, you know, really lean into the, the life of crime heavily. Uh, Born into the insanity of his father. Well, it seems like the dad does most of the dirty, weird stuff, you know, uh, murder for hire, you know, whatever he's into away from the house. So he doesn't seem he knows not to bring the violence back home. Well, that's nice. (laughs) (laughs) Chuck, you brought home another dead body. Put put that in the the positive column. You know, he doesn't bring it into the house. Yeah. He doesn't bring his work home with him. (laughs) Like severed heads. are. He's not bringing in a bag. What did I tell you about burying people in the backyard? (laughs) We got guests coming over tomorrow. (laughs) Uh, um, at some point, Charles just disappears um, around 1968. Like, he was kind of coming and going, but at some point, he's just totally gone. They don't mm. know where the hell he is. Do you believe in magic? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's like Job in uh, Arrested Development. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's in between the summer of love and Woodstock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe he went to Woodstock. <laughs> that would be crazy. 99. Yeah. He, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Travel time and get to Woodstock 99. <laughs> well, a lot of details are murky around this time. This is a weird thing I just picked up out of the blue. Um, just last m- or two months ago, April 2023, Matthew McGon- McGonaghy claims that he and Woody Harrelson, who have been longtime friends, could potentially be brothers because uh, Matthew McG- McG- McGonaghy's dad meets um, uh, Woody Harrelson's mom around this time. I think they might have been dating after Charles left. Oh, and he, and he thinks they could have banged and had uh, both of them. Wow. Yeah, so they could be half brothers. And I, you know, they met on the set of Ed TV. And yeah. oh, did they, they? They played brothers in that movie. They did, that's correct. Yeah, the movie was garbage. <laughs> <laughs> it really is, because it followed. But that's it. the movies when you're like, oh, it was the best time. We made lifelong friends. And you, you see the movie, like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and they had the unfortunate uh, luck of following the Truman Show. Which oh, had right. a yeah. similar, similar premise, premise similar but it premise, was a yeah. much better movie. And Ron Howard directed it too. Oh, the yeah, Ed yeah, TV. Ed TV, yeah. No, Truman Show was just superior in every way. And then when Ed TV came around, people were like, "Um, no, yeah, no, thank you." <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like it's what the studios used to do. Like if like you know one studio is doing do Deep Impact, another one's doing Armageddon. Yeah, and then yeah. there was, remember, around the same time, Saving Private Ryan, then the Thin Red Line. Yeah. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Thin Red Line, I thought was great, but I thought I think Saving Private Ryan was better. But it had to follow Saving Private Ryan, so yeah. it just looked like a yeah. copycat. Yeah. Exactly. Even though Terrence Malick probably spent 30 years making it. Yeah, <laughs> that maniac, and <laughs> <laughs> for like 20 people to go see it. Yeah, including you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, Charles Harrison Harrelson disappears from the family's house in Houston, 1968. He left uh, Diane to raise Woody and their uh, two other sons together by herself. Um, by all accounts, uh, his dad just kind of, you know, put his head down, went deeper into a life of crime. Um, maybe he was trying to provide for his family and send money home. You know, who the hell knows? I 
what he was doing around this time, but he seems like he's like an old Wild West outlaw kind of, yeah. you know, just out there on the on the on the range, just like you know, taking you know taking care of people and and doing like duels and stuff. I don't know, <laughs> like what he's doing at the casino. He shoots the cards he doesn't like. Yeah, um, well, he's 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 he gets arrested basically three big times uh, in the next couple of years. <laughs> Three big uh, instances. Three big ones. Three Sir, big ones. you have a rap sheet longer than a CVS receipt. But yeah, it was only three big times. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, get out of here. That's long. Uh, okay, first case I'm going to talk about. All here. right. 1968, Charles is tried for the murder of a carpet salesman outside of Houston. Okay. The victim, Alan Berg, was working with his father in Houston when he was lured into a bar by a phone call from a mysterious woman promising sexual favors. So some girl must have just called him and just said, hey, I want to I wanna suck you off. <laughs> He's like, this, I'll be right there. Come, <laughs> come in this dark alley, you know, where there's an explosive tied to, the, yeah. you know, to your feet. Or He's something. dancing the whole way. He's like, it's my lucky day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I don't know if he wants it from a woman there. Uh, <laughs> um, evidence suggests that he was then kidnapped and killed. Um, obviously, there was not a real woman involved in this, but Charles must have hired someone to make that fake phone call for him. Yeah, he's tied up in a trunk being like, am I to believe that I am not going to get sucked off here? <laughs> <laughs> he's like complaining already. Yeah. Um, I wonder if he was rolled up in one of his own rugs. Probably. Yeah, maybe. Um, the killing may have been payback against the Berg's father, orchestrated by a former employee whom the elder Berg had been bad-mouthing in the community. So it's basically like an angry ex-employee who just like was was mad that he got fired, it seems like. Wow. And he took it out in the sun to kill him. It's, it seems a little harsh. Um, yeah, a bit of an overreaction. Also evidence that Alan Berg had significant gambling debts, but that's probably the defense making this part up. Um, mm. You know, who knows? But that's more believable to me. Yeah. That he would be killed for a huge debt. Then just talking shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, Unless you're Aaron Hernandez. Yeah. Yeah. Well, either way, on September 22nd, 1970, Charles is acquitted. Ooh. Um, Alan's brother, David, wrote a New York Times bestseller years later called Run, Brother, Run, a memoir of a murder in my family. That's the rug guy's brother. brother. Yeah, he thinks wow. that Woody Harrelson, um, Woody Harrelson's dad, uh, might have like fixed the jury or something, and that's how he got acquitted in 1970 uh. Uh, in the murder of his brother. But he also said in the book that he cannot ever watch a Woody Harrelson movie ever because <laughs> it traumatizes him. He can't even watch an episode of Cheers or Ed TV. Well, uh. that's a gift. Yeah, <laughs> I was traumatized <laughs> from MTV. <laughs> but he did explain how he had, because No Country for Old Men was such a good movie, that he had to go see it, and uh, he, he was, in fact, traumatized. Um, and said it was a similar storyline to his brother um, being killed, but I don't know. I don't know about that. that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. His brother's is real. <laughs> I, don't I was traumatized watching that movie. And yeah. I didn't know anybody in the movie. Yeah, because yeah, it's so good, yeah. <laughs> and it's so freaking scary. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, they said it was like uh, the good old boys club. That's how we got off, and, you know, who the hell knows. But um, but he got off his first one. So here's the second case that I wanted to bring up. Um, Everybody gets off their first murder. This is the si- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. It's a mulligan. Yeah, yes. it's a first uh, first killing fluke. <laughs> yeah. They call it. It's the second one they might yeah. get you. Off. Well, this well, and the third one, you're a troublemaker. Yeah. <laughs> so, second case, Harrelson has tried for the 1968 murder for hire killing of Sam DeGilia Jr., a resident of Hearn, Texas. So, allegedly, Charles Harrelson was paid two thousand dollars. Um, for the murder of DeGalia, who was a grain dealer and a father of four. Grain, is that code for, like, heroin? No, just, like, grains just for, like, um, farming and stuff. Huh. But yeah. So he's not taking out, you know, 
the heavy hitters here. <laughs> he's taking out hardworking, yeah, I know, gentlemen who have a you know four kids. Like he's this is awful. He's not a sympathetic <laughs> character. He's not no. a Robin Hood like character here. Not at all. Yeah, he's not a good guy. Woody was right. He, he doesn't sound like a saint. Yeah, yeah, and this doesn't sound like the CIA like you know training someone. Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to go after Cobbler next, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the Adam Grain Sandler dealer. character. I fixed his shoe. Next week, he's going after a shoe shine guy. <laughs> yeah. Get your shine box. Yeah, go get your shine box. <laughs> and then he takes a knife out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how he gets him. Um, the trial ended with a deadlock jury. Um, although his co defendant uh, and the alleged accomplice, Pete. Scamardo was tried and found guilty. Um, Charles Harrelson got off because wow, wow. It, it was a deadlock jury. They couldn't uh, fully uh, prosecute him Gee. or consider him guilty. He got off like Michael Hutchins. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. boy. Yes. Um, <laughs> in 1997. They retry him, and he's convicted in 1973. And he's given 15 years in prison. Ooh. So they didn't get him the first time around. They got him the second time around, and they... He got 15 years. In 1978, after serving five years, uh, he's released for good behavior. So he's a good prisoner, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I so promise you're not going to kill anybody else? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I promise. Yeah, that just means you became religious in prison or something. Probably. You know, and yeah. read to other inmates. Yeah. It made them seem like, you know, you're going to be going on the straight and narrow. Mm -hmm. So do you think Mr. Harrelson goes on the straight and narrow after this, guys? I think so. Yeah. You think so? Okay. And he was really proud when Woody was on Cheers. Yeah. yeah. He's when watching that in the cell with all these guys. <laughs> 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 You're such a norm, man. <laughs> um, no, he doesn't. He goes, ah, he, he goes right back into it. Um, his, here's the third case. Okay. May 29th, 1979. This is the day that I'll live in infamy in the life of Woody Harrelson and his father. Um, U.S. District Judge John H. Wood Jr., um, also known uh, as Maximum John, because he was a guy that would uh, give very stiff sentences out to uh, criminals. <laughs> so they called him Maximum John. <laughs> stiff Wood is better. Stiff Wood <laughs> is right there, like waiting for you, but they called him <laughs> Maximum John. Because I don't think uh, other judges are like, let's call this guy Stiff Wood. You yeah. know? <laughs> so should we call him Stiff Wood moving forward? Stiff Wood. Yes. What do you say, <laughs> listeners? All right, <laughs> Stiff Wood it is. <laughs> and it's John? Uh, yeah, yeah, John that, H. That, Stiff Wood Jr. <laughs> it just doesn't fit with maximum. Like yeah. maximum, John. Yeah, it doesn't roll <laughs> off the tongue. He's Stiff Wood. That makes yeah. way more sense. So U.S. Dis District Judge, maximum uh, whatever. Stiff Wood. Stiff Wood. <laughs> He's shot dead in the parking lot outside his San Antonio, Texas townhouse. Jeez. Yeah. Wow. So, as I said, he he had a history of just doling out very long sentences to criminals. Yeah. On this specific day, he was about to hand down a sentence for reputed Texas drug dealer and rug salesman, Jimmy Chagra. Oof. So, not only is this guy, like, the biggest drug dealer in, like, the Texas area... He's also a rug salesman. Yeah. Another rug salesman. I can't believe there's another rug salesman. Yeah, I, I'm wondering if rug salesman, maybe even the first guy, that's like a side gig or like a <laughs> legit <laughs> part of your, your drug business. Yeah. Everyone pretends to be a rug salesman, maybe. It has to be, just yeah. like the grain guy. Yes, exactly. Rug sale. I didn't realize that was such a lucrative business to get into. Rugs. Well, I guess in Texas it is. They need their rugs down there. <laughs> I didn't even. Know. <laughs> I thought they lived in dirt, dirt floors. Yeah. So Jimmy Chagra was very worried about getting a stiff sentence that morning um, from Stiff Wood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maximum John was about to lay the wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the prosecutor was named Haywood. Yeah. <laughs> Haywood Jablomi. Hey. Nice. <laughs> Would ya? <laughs> Um, so it seems kind of obvious the guy that you're really literally just about to sentence to 30 years in jail is the one who just shoots you outside of your front door. Yeah, it, it seems pretty cut and dry to me, but they actually have to go about, you know, proving this. So he just got shot in the head once, just dead. Yeah. Well, someone had uh, had uh, popped his tire. So he, he, oh. he and that's mm. a smart move, actually, yeah. if you're trying hey. to kill someone. Look over there. Yeah. While I shoot you in the head. <laughs> wow. 
Um, Oof, that wood went limp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that wood went soft. <laughs> it's a soft wood now. Oof, yeah. And so he w- that was at outside his house. Yeah. Yeah, he had like a ta- like a condo townhouse. Like, mm. you know, you w- you know with like a shared parking area. Mm-hmm. So he w- that's where he was parking every morning. He didn't have like a a judge like that should have like an underground garage or something. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, the HOA was probably like, can you clean this blood that's coming out of your head <laughs> <Yeah>. up? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Stiffwood? Uh. <laughs> Mr. Stiffwood? <laughs> and he must have been in such a chipper mood that day because he's about to hand out one of his stiffest sentences. Yeah, oh, which yeah. is his favorite thing to do. This is like the Rolling Stones playing Satisfaction. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he could barely contain it. Yeah. <laughs> He's just uh, ready to dole out years like crazy. Yeah. And that, that's his favorite thing to do. Um, so who is Jimmy Chagra? Let's find out more about okay. this, this character. The second rug guy. Uh, yes, the second rug guy, but the biggest weed dealer in like the 1960s in the southwest of America. Oh, wow. Which is, that's like a, like a big thing to be. He's a half Lebanese, half American drug trafficker. Carpet salesman and professional gambler based in Texas. Did so. you say Lebanese? Yeah. Like Lebanon, Ohio? Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, that's true. I didn't even put that connection together, yeah. actually. <laughs> or the, to God, or the other Lebanon. No, Lebanon, Middle East. Oh. Yeah. Well, you usually don't. It's not like. Like someone's not half Lebanese if they just <laughs> they, if they they grew up ha- there half their life. Lebanese Ohio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm Lebanese. Yeah. I'm from Lebanon, Ohio. Yeah, <laughs> it's not like that. <laughs> he is uh, of the original country, Lebanon. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, he sold tons of marijuana. Started in the 1960s and the 1970s. He was the, well known as the biggest. Drug, drug trafficker operating out of Las Vegas in El Paso, Texas. Um, he worked with the East Coast Mafia crime families, the Patriarchas out of New England and the Bananos out of New York. So he's oh. well connected all over the country. The Bananos, that's that's one of the major crime families. Yes. And that's who the Menendez brothers tried to blame for their parents' death. That really? Guy, Neil Bloom, who uh, distributed pornographic films and also worked for the Bananos, they were like, he did it! <laughs> <laughs> he I'm, did it! <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't blame Woody Harrelson's dad. <laughs> they <Yeah>. should have. <laughs> they should have. He was it, already in prison. Yeah. I'm sure he would have <laughs> taken the charge. He, he was for other things, and we'll, yeah. we'll get to that in a moment, too. Um yeah, Jimmy Chagra was the undisputed marijuana kingpin of the Western world. Of the world! <laughs> <laughs> Prior to his arrest, he accumulated approximately $100 million in various bank accounts, today amounting to about $500 million. Wow. Um, he had a big uh, mansion in Vegas. This guy was pretty well set. He wow. had a lot to lose, we'll say that. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> um, in the 1970s, the DEA and FBI and like basically just the Fed start looking into him. Um, and Jimmy is getting pretty nervous, obviously. Um, he's starting to feel the heat. Um, a U.S. attorney who starts asking questions into his organization, this guy, James Kerr, who's a U.S. attorney general, uh, U.S. district attorney, rather. Um, he <laughs> gets shot at in uh, November 21st, 1978. So during this investigation, it just so happens the guy investigating uh, Jimmy Chagra is shot at 19 times. Um, it, but Kerr escaped with only minor glass cuts. What? Yeah. So <laughs> this guy, Jimmy Chagra, is insane. Wow. Like, okay. he, he's taking out, he's trying to take out, like, government officials. And, like, which makes sense that he would have been the person involved in the murder of a f- uh, federal judge. So he's like Sam Jackson from Pulp Fiction, dodging bullets. I get oh, this guy Kerr, yeah. Divine intervention. Nineteen, yeah. How do you get shot at nineteen times and not get hit? He's like Fifty Cent, man. <laughs> 50 Cent was actually shot. Yeah, he actually got shot. This though. guy yeah. d- didn't get hurt. Yeah, nineteen. Well, it must have been a very bad shot. That's why they had to get for the uh, the judge for you know for what's his name Wood, yeah. Stiff Wood. <laughs> they had to get uh, Woody Harrelson's dad. Uh, so obviously. Jimmy Chagra is a natural suspect for the killing of this judge after he was already taking shots at the uh, uh, you know federal attorney. So Jimmy Chagra, he has a couple lawyer brothers who are his legal team. This guy Joe and Lee. 
Um, and they were also heavily involved in Jimmy's drug operation. So they're not just lawyers that like leave the room where they're like, okay, this is where it's getting too thick for me. You know, I'm out of here. Yeah. They stay around for all like the, 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 the dirty stuff <laughs> yeah. too. <laughs> I mean, that's convenient to have brothers as lawyers, but yeah. it seems like a bad idea. Yeah. You need to go after the big guns, get the get the big attorneys yeah. on this, you know? So as much as the feds try, they can't actually pin the attempt on Prosecutor Kerr's life to Jimmy. Um, but they're still on to him. They're still like they want blood, you know. They that just made them like, you know, even more hungry to take this guy down. They're watching him now. They're watching him. And you can't just kill a, a federal prosecutor and think like that's it. I'm off scot free, you know, in or a judge or anything. So basically, um, Jim Jimmy is is um, on the hook for uh, trafficking charges for drug trafficking charges, and they got him. They have like informants. They pretty much got him dead to rights. Um, and that's when um, that's when before Judge Stiff Wood is killed, Jimmy actually offered to bribe him for five or ten million dollars he's like i'll give you this amount of money and let's pretend like this never happened and then once that didn't work out all of a sudden you know uh stiff wood is murdered so wow. at, everything points to jimmy chagra <laughs> yeah. being involved in this killing Oof. in retrospect maybe he should have just taken the five million yeah probably well, this is crazy because the movie The Electric Horseman, it's by Sidney Pollack directed it. It came out in December 21st, 1979. So he was already kind of doing like big things in entertainment and like getting his name out there and stuff. Who knows? A local guy uh, could have been like, you know, wanted to be the hometown hero and put him away. Yeah. Because he's getting too big for his britches, bragging mm. about all these crimes and stuff. Yeah. So that kind of adds another element to it for me. Yeah. Jimmy Chagra? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think he's got a big uh, you know, target on his back from a lot of people. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people in the federal government. And, you know, speaking of the good old boys down there, you know, a, a Lebanese American, they might be like, they might especially want to take this guy out. Yeah. <laughs> and he's bragging about taking, you know, his hundreds of millions of dollars, his mansion, and the fact that he's able to evade law enforcement for so many years, it, it really angers a lot of people, I'm sure. Yeah. Especially people with not as much money. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so anyway, w he's looking at a possible, possible life sentence if Maximum John gives it to him. Um, so Maximum John is killed. All of a sudden, you know, the feds, you know, they kick it into high gear. They're like... Okay, this is completely insane. We can't let this guy get away with this. So, um, Jimmy uh, is has been in federal custody for like um, a couple of weeks. So, um, the brothers, uh, the lawyer brothers, uh, Joe and Lee, have been visiting him, and they've been protected by uh, lawyer client privilege, and so therefore, they're assuming they're safe. And that the room that they're meeting in is not going to be surveilled in any way Ooh. Uh, by the federal authorities. Uh, well, they were wrong. That would be illegal. The feds were actually surveilling the room that <laughs> in which they were doing all these, you know, lawyer or client privilege talks. But That's inadmissible, isn't it? In it's, court, it's inadmissible unless um, there's an intent to uh, commit a crime. By oh the lawyers themselves. Wow. But they're not able to find that out until they listen to all the tapes, until after the judge is killed. So, but if a previous federal judge approved them reviewing all those tapes and seeing what was on there. Once they did listen to them, they found uh, there was a uh, contract killing ordered for $250,000 to go to Charles Harrelson. Wow. For the killing okay. of Judge Stiff Wood. <laughs> <laughs> but. Okay. So Chuck got out and he went right back to crime. Right back to crime. Yeah. 250K when they also offered five to 10 million to somebody else. Well, five to 10 million to the judge in order to, oh, right. to bribe him. Yeah. So it's, it's easier to bribe and not kill a federal judge than. Uh, but yeah, 250 grand um, is a good chunk and change. For Chuck, who's been getting paid $2,000 to kill 
you know, grain salesman a year ago. Would right. you take the five to ten million? As a if, judge? If you're a judge, yeah. Mm. Depends on the scenario. Yeah. Depends if I'm going to get whacked. Depends on yeah. if I'm stiff. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but still, if you're going to kill a federal judge, it seems like you could ask for a little more. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's making bank anyway, so he's probably just like, I'm already set for life no matter what. Uh, I don't have to be voted in to be a judge. I can just be a judge. Oh, forever. you mean the judge? No, yeah. I'm talking about Chuck. Oh, oh, Chuck. Yeah, of course. He'd do it for ten bucks. Well, no, yeah. but I'm saying Chuck <laughs> should have asked for more. Yeah, yeah, he absolutely should have. Or I the think the judge. No, yeah, the yeah. judge. The judge is happy. Yeah, but <laughs> I, as far as we all know, like. Harrelson, Chuck Harrelson would have got away with it if it wasn't for these recordings. Yeah. If it wasn't for these meddling kids. Not to say he's like some <laughs> super, you know, um, Carlos the Jackal type guy or something. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but he got away with it seemingly. Yeah. So, but he didn't. <laughs> so Almost got away almost. with it. Almost. So they, those tapes lead the feds right to Charles Harrelson. They go right to his house and they have like a six hour standoff with him while he's high on cocaine screaming <laughs> out of the house that he's renting with his then new wife joanne and he's yelling yes i did it i killed the judge but he's also saying yes i did it i i helped kill john f kennedy <laughs> ah yes so is he trying to sound crazy by adding the kennedy part I don't know. You Let's get what I'm saying? Like he's trying to appear like he's nuts. Insane. So yeah. that they can't take anything he says seriously. That That is a theory also. But why would he even throw out there any admission at all? True. Just to show that he is cr- I don't even know what the, what the reasoning True. is for that. Well, it's for clout. Like this is before the internet. There's been people like this forever. The fact that he was admitting that he was involved in dozens of murders, it's like, oh, because it's kind of cool. Like, yeah, people maybe. People think like, oh, this guy's a bad. He must have been cr- nuts, man. Yeah. I, and I think that's what he did when when Woody really developed a relationship with him after he got arrested and everything. And I think his dad was just a very um, good at convincing people of certain things, especially his oh, son, yeah. who's like looking out for anyone to be his like good friend. And his son is looking out for any male, you know, father figure that he could ever find. And, and his father is a pretty good father figure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the JFK thing. Let's back up a little bit. Okay. I, I want to go into this because this is fascinating to All me, right. and also fascinating because uh, natural born killers Oliver Stone, you know, also created the movie JFK. Mm. Which there is the okay, so Charles had told a lot of people, not just uh these federal prosecutors, that he was involved in the JFK assassination. So he he had and I think he was a cokehead too, so cokeheads tend to say a lot of things. Sometimes mm, yeah. they go to like paranoid rants in which they believe the lie that they're telling at this point. But And they pick the biggest lie they can think of. This is a huge lie. <laughs> so as you can see in the pictures here. Charles Harrelson um, has a very similar resemblance to one of the tramps from the uh, around Daly Plaza the day that JFK was killed, November 22nd, 1963. So these tramps, um, some believe, were CIA hit squad who was involved in the second shooting, basically, I want to say, mm-hmm. on the grassy knoll, literally on the grassy knoll. Um and he he does bear a very similar resemblance to the tallest one um, in the that three of tramps. He's one of the tramps. Tramps is like a a term they use, you know, as like basically bummer, like you know, homeless person, like riding the rails. Yeah, but he lived in Texas then. He could have been there. Could have been there, and that was a time like he was in and out of the family house, and no one knew exactly where he was. Remember? Yeah. A Rolling Stone. But he also could have just been hanging out, because this was like near the train track, so maybe he was just kind of... Also, two things can be true at the same time. JFK got killed. There was a, uh, you know, there was a conspiracy, but also this bum was just hanging out near, <laughs> the, <laughs> near the train tracks. Yeah. Was he gone already by then in 1963? No, but he was coming and going, but 1968 he was gone permanently. Yeah, but 63. Yeah, 63 he was coming and going. And okay. His whereabouts weren't 100% confirmed at this time. I think Woody would have been around two years old, two okay. or three years old. Yeah. Do they think the tramps had something to do with it? They do. Well, it, there's Jim Garrison, who is a was a prosecutor in New Orleans, came up with some big theory that um, 
that these tramps were part of a uh, you know CIA squad that was there to create misinformation, confusion, and were somehow instrumental in putting together you know, making Lee Harvey Oswald into the patsy that some people believe he was, uh. and that like they were like there were teams of people working that didn't know about each other at, uh, on that day. It's very cloak and dagger, you know, mm, yeah. smoke. Uh, you know, no one smoke and mirrors. No one knows exactly what happened, but th- there that is basically the theory that um, this this did happen. But JF, uh, but Chuck is saying on his own that he was involved. No one, no one has been able to corroborate that at all. And was that as a CIA agent? Um, that yes, he was convinced that he was a CIA agent, and so that was him acting as a CIA agent. Yes. And the entire premise of that conspiracy theory is that the CIA did kill JFK. Mm -hmm. And and so he was an agent of them. Said, I guess, that he never left them after he left the Navy in 1958 uh, or 1959, that he never left the service, that he was constantly involved and he was a member of the CIA. The Kennedy stuff, it was never confirmed. The FBI just totally dismissed it. What do you believe? But the FBI dismissed that, but they also believed um, when he said he did kill the judge, and they took that admission of guilt. Yeah. Well, that's more believable, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, Do I think he had something to do with the JFK assassination? No, I don't. I I think it it would have been more confirmable there would have been more verifiable truth yeah. if there was any of this if the cia if he was working for them you know if there was any transmissions or communications it would have been more yeah i think he's just a a tail spinner he just loves telling these grandiose stories about himself and how but he's been involved in high profile things but it, but he has he ki- he just killed a federal judge too <laughs> 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 that's why it's like very you know, confusing yeah. and, and muddled. We need to do a seance and get Kennedy's ghost to tell us what happened. Yeah. I think it was... Uh, <laughs> it was Woody Steph Harrelson's Wood. dad. <laughs> <laughs> Steph Wood was not involved in this matter of me. Um, so either way, uh, Charles gets tried and convicted of first-degree murder of the judge. He gets two life sentences plus five years. I don't know mm-hmm. why... Why the extra five years were on there. They always do that, <laughs> don't they? Yeah. Throw in a little extra <laughs> cream on top of the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Charles's wife, uh, Joanne, gets 25 years for giving a false alibi for the murder. Uh, wait, wait. Oh, the the, wi- the new wife. The new wife gave Charles a false alibi that said they were together and like they weren't murdering a judge, basically. <laughs> and she got 25 years? Yes. That's Ooh. harsh. Bye, yeah. bye Joanne. Yeah. Jimmy Chagra gets... Um, he originally gets convicted, but he and, but he eventually gets off. And this is what Woody was talking about in the Barbara Walters interview. This the guy who actually hired um, Charles does get off on that murder, but he wow. but they get him for a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. So he got off on that murder because of that shady um, recording situation with the uh, the client uh, wow. lawyer p- privilege, attorney privilege or whatever. Um. Jimmy actually winds up fessing up to his role in the murder after the fact uh, because he wants to get his wife out early because his wife goes down, too, because she was the bag person who took the 250 k to Charles. Wow. So she gets 25 years right out the gate and he got acquitted. (laughs) Yeah. So for a second there, he wasn't even in prison while she was. That's crazy. But then he admitted to it in order to get her out. But the the feds didn't even let her out of jail. And she dies of ovarian cancer at the age of 41 in prison. Wow. Oh, my God. They they must have thrown like, you know, a bunch of smaller charges at her or just made it. You kept delaying things. But he had initially made that deal Oof. in order to, you know, get her out, and she died in prison. It was very sad. Oh. But she also did, you know, send uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars in cash to kill a federal judge. <laughs> Jimmy Chagra himself <laughs> winds up getting out of prison in two thousand three due to his own illness. He's still alive. No, yeah. his protection. Jimmy Chagra died. Oh, he did die. Yeah, ah. uh, July twenty fifth, two thousand eight, in Mesa, Arizona. Okay, I stand corrected. Yeah. Woody Harrelson uses that, you know, Jimmy Chagra vindication to get his dad out of jail, and he hires none other than Alan Dershowitz to help get, help get him out. 
and he appeals um, yeah. all the convictions. And he spends millions and millions of dollars with Dershowitz, who I'm I'm sure is happy to to keep you know funding his you know Martha's Vineyard house or whatever yeah. with his money. And one of his breaks from Epstein Island. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, in an interview with The Guardian, Woody claimed that he didn't discover the reality of his father's absence until he was 11 or 12. He stated, I was listening to the radio and it was talking about Charles V. Harrelson in his trial for murder and blah, blah, blah. And I'm sitting there thinking, can't there be another Charles V. Harrelson? I mean, that's my dad. It was a wild realization. So he didn't know that his dad was was charged with killing a federal judge until they heard it on the radio and then he asked his mom about it and then they did some research and sure enough that was that was his dad she didn't know either no as, as far as uh what do you know maybe she was trying to hide it from him too yeah or was it one of those things that the mom lies about how great the dad is yeah it could have been maybe your dad's an astronaut and he, we can't See him or talk about him. Yeah, he yeah. died in the Challenger. <laughs> 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 the challenge. Yeah, in uh, in ten years, yeah. the Challenger. <laughs> <laughs> he died in the future. You get it. Um, his other quote here is saying, "My father is one of the most articulate, well-read, charming people I've ever known. Still, hmm. I'm just now gauging whether he merits my loyalty or friendship. I look at him as someone." who could be a friend more than someone who was a father. So I think he, maybe he does understand that there, there is some problems there with his dad that, you know, he's, he's very imperfect, clearly. Yeah. Uh, but he's like, he gave him a shot, clearly. Yeah. Um, yeah the dad gave a shot to the federal judge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah to <laughs> Stiff Wood. He gave him a stiff, uh, <laughs> stiff bullet to the Stiff Wood. Give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Charles Harrelson dies March 15, 2007, at the age of 69 of a heart attack in his cell at Colorado Supermax Federal Prison. R.I.P., I I guess? I guess. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Uh, Big, crazy, crazy story. This Mm. entire thing. Like, this guy, Jimmy Chaga, I could not believe the balls on this guy. (laughs) To, (laughs) To take on the entire federal government. It never... As Donald Trump is figuring out right now, it never works out. Um, wow. But yeah, whether I, I don't, I still. What do you guys think about the CIA thing? I think it's bullshit. I think anybody who runs away from their family and then is like, "Well, I was caught up with these crazy. I was in the CIA." Okay. Yeah. I think it's just he's. Uh, it's a way out of like a very bad. If you're very high on cocaine, it seems more plausible you're going to make stuff up like that. Yeah. yeah. Some people are just grifters, and he, I believe he was one. And, uh, I mean, he was a professional gambler. Yeah. And uh, He'd say anything to get out of jail. And he would, yeah. If you're, if you're charging $2,000, uh, you know, for low-level hits, like uh, a couple of years earlier, you're not involved with the CIA. I don't you're think they're the going to... They're pal. not going to condone that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have one more clip here. Um, can you... This is uh, Charles Harrelson talking about the assassination of JFK from prison. All right, here we go. You said you'd killed President Kennedy. At the same time I said I had killed the judge, I said I had killed Kennedy. Well, do you believe Lee Harvey Oswald killed President Kennedy? We'll get back to that. Alone, without any aid from a rogue um, agency of the U.S. government, or at least a, a portion of that agency. I believe you're very naive if you do. Yeah, I agree with that. Hmm. I mean, it's just such a general statement. It's not like I did it, you know. I I think he at that point he would kind of come down off the cocaine and it's like, yeah. <laughs> no, he's not talking crazy anymore. Yeah, it's hard to believe. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous, and the fact that Woody Harrelson is so on board with the idea that his dad is in the CIA and involved. In, I don't know. Unbelievable. It's his dad. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You want to believe the best. Yeah. Well, I mean, you want to believe there was a reason he neglected you for so many years. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know. Besides was, just money. Doing important work. It was unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> Chopping people's heads <laughs> off. Bless them my heart. Oh, man. Man. <laughs> you sound like Bill Clinton when you do uh, Woody. <laughs> Well, he sounded like it too, and he's yeah. like, "Unbelievable!" <laughs> <laughs> he did have a weird accent. Though. Feel your pain. I don't know why he was sounding like that. Yeah, yeah. I think I know why. Yeah, he's on uh, weed. Well, he's on weed though. That's smart of him to to you know go deep into the weed and not the cocaine. 
<laughs> it is what it is. I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say about the whole thing. I don't know. What do you like? Any any hot takes? <clears throat> My only hot take is that he's a deadbeat dad that needed something that sounded cool, and he seems like a clout chaser anyway to even admit to people publicly that he was involved with dozens of murders. He wants the clout. He wants people to think he's awesome. And he, clout, though, he for means killing, business for killing people. Clout? Yeah, you won't fuck with me. Now, you know what I, I fucking kill people. You know what I really take away from this entire thing? It's a guy that did not want to get a, a real job. <laughs> <laughs> That is the simplest. <laughs> Boil it down. Yeah. yeah. I agree with you, though. And, like, he, he didn't want to do the straight and narrow. He's living in a world or a lifestyle. He's like a cowboy. Mm-hmm. He, he, like, you could actually be a contract killer and, like, you, you know, you wouldn't be arrested. Yeah. Unless you, you killed the wrong person. Uh, but for the most part, you know, that was a trade that was allowed back in the day. Right. And I think he's just kind of, maybe he's got that bl- that outlaw blood in him, <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, it's not the wild, wild west anymore. No, it, that's why no country for old men. That's pretty much what a lot of that story is about. You know, like um, the world changing around you, and like the old coming in with the new and stuff. And yeah, I think the dad was just a sad guy that just did not see himself working at a desk job. You know, it's, no, it's kind of like office space. <laughs> 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 yeah, clearly he didn't want to have a punch card and work nine to five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he maybe he already went out to L.A. to make it there as something. Yeah, but he didn't know what acting was. But what he found being a trained, you know, stage actor was the way to go. But the dad just never really pursued anything like that. He's like, I found a gold mine encyclopedias. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a deep down just. That's what happens to people, you know. They, they're two very similar people, I bet. But Woody just kind of uh, geared it towards a positive aspect. Yeah, it's where do you point your ambition? Yeah, exactly. Do you think this story will become a movie while Woody Harrelson's still alive? Hmm. Or hmm. working? That would be crazy. Because this is a fucking amazing tale to be able to see in like a, a series or a. Uh, even just one movie. Yeah, or like a miniseries. <laughs> it could yeah. be multiple yeah. movies. The Electric Rug Salesman. Yeah. <laughs> the Electric Encyclopedia yeah. Yeah. Salesman. It's like Kill Bill 1 and 2 or something. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah. The <laughs> and, yeah, all these little weird characters that kind of come in and out and the fact that he was able to get away. And at no point did he, you know, you know, turn down the, the temperature on his life. He just goes right back into it. Yeah. The throttle's always on 100%. Do you think his calling card was turning on cheers after he killed somebody? Yeah. To leave that little... (laughs) 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 Good one. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I know you are now. But it would only work for 30 minutes. (laughs) That's the guy who got got his throat cut by by Charles, (laughs) who's who's appreciating the the technique. (laughs) <laughs> I tell you what, though, I bet in prison Chuck watched the Cheers finale with all the other inmates. Oh, I'm sure. I, oh, he must have. That's and my son. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, right. And you killed Kennedy, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> actually, yes. <laughs> all these things are true. <laughs> but that one actually was true. Yeah. yeah. That he's Woody Harrelson's dad. I know. Well, yeah. that's the thing about his dad. He he does real big crazy things. But then he lies about other big crazy things. So it's hard to, you know, if you kill a federal judge, you know. You can't kill a federal judge. You can't kill cops without them throwing the book at you. Yeah. You're done. Yeah, you just can't trust anything a guy like this says. So that's why I'm kind of undecided on whether or not he even had committed other murders Mm. other than the ones that he got caught for. I think he was so dumb that he got caught every time he killed someone. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it seems like it. Mm. Yeah, like how does he get he, all those three times he did, you know, at least get arrested for yeah. that. Mm-hmm. So he's not a great criminal, but he's just <laughs> the craziest guy that will kill a judge. Yeah, I will kill a judge for not a lot of money. No, yeah. but you, you well, have to be. Grand, tw- yeah. I mean, <laughs> then it was more like yeah. 500, 500 grand. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you also have to be discreet to be a great criminal. Yeah. You have to shut the fuck up. Yeah, well, he sounds like this guy was squawking like a. He he's got a six-hour showdown with the with the Fed. Yeah, and which yeah. is you know he's admitting to 
you know, the Chicago Fires. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's been in everything. He's like when yeah. OJ did that book, If I Did It. Yeah, yeah. I killed Lincoln. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I killed Lincoln. I'll get you two next, see? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, JFK too, okay? Yeah. All right, do we want to go to the mailbag? Let's do it. Okay, we have a very nice new review from Apple Podcasts. Yes. From five stars. Five stars from Ian Fan. What do you think that means? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> a fan of Ian. Ian. Not Ween. Ian. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Quote, respectful, entertaining, and addicting. Ooh. The chemistry between the three hosts is great. Okay. Kyle, Alejandro, and Mark treat each story with the respect it deserves while keeping it light, informative, and entertaining. You'll want to keep listening and click the next episode. A great podcast to binge listen to. Thank you. That was very nice. You said it was nicer than YouTube comments? Way nicer. Do, do we want to read those? <laughs> <laughs> we should have like a whole series of uh, us responding to the most negative comments. Yes, <laughs> verbally to, to them. Yeah, challenging them all to fights. An open letter to our haters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we have a lot of nice YouTube comments, too. We do. Yeah. In fact, I have one right here from Daniel... Watcher of the Lord, 1823. Yikes. <laughs> Quote, y'all will definitely get more subscribers if y'all keep up this podcast because y'all are freaking hilarious. I love it. Hey. We need that. Thank we you love you. so much, sir. And then another fan, Claire Alot, said of the Urban Legends episodes, the Urban Legends episodes were awesome. Yeah. I would love it if you revisited the Urban Legends theme in the future. Yeah, that could end up being like its own little uh, video series. Mm. It would be fun. Yeah, and on Patreon, I was thinking of doing a yes. bonus episode. There we um, go. We have now charted on Apple Podcasts in the stand-up category in 17 different countries. Oh, Ooh, my God. Yeah. International. Including America. We got as high as uh, 30 last week. We are down to 53 right now in America. 79 in Great Britain. Hello. 116 in Canada. 36 in Australia. 57th in France. Uh, we got 97th in Norway. 14th in Denmark. 91 in New Zealand. Uh, we're up 23 spots in Italy to number 16, top 20 in Italy. Hello, Manja. Manja. <laughs> uh, number 66 in Belgium, six in Poland, down from number two. Uh, but yes, so thank you to all these countries. The other ones, Hong Kong, Finland, Slovenia, Slovakia, and Lithuania. We've been with you before. We appreciate you still listening. Uh, all in the top 50. We're everywhere. And two in the top 20. Where aren't we? That's a better yeah. thing to, say, to answer. It's like we got to get the United Nations flags over here in the background now. Yeah, I know. We are traveling We're everywhere. In citizens of the world we are. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, we'll catch you next week. If you want to see some extra stuff, go to our Patreon.com slash Death and Entertainment. Throw us a few shekels. You'll get some extra uh, entertainment, including... Uh, when I went to Delphi, Indiana, and Ooh. looked at the bridge that, uh, that unfortunately two murders stuff. Very creepy. happened on. Yeah, and uh, that will be an episode coming up soon because the, the footage of the killer was captured on Snapchat right before they were killed. And the trial is about to start. So, yeah, we'll cover that. Oh, cool. <laughs> Until next week, don't go dying on us. Ah. Bye. You have just heard... A true Hollywood murder mystery. I have never seen anything like this before. The movies, Broadway, music, television, all of it. A place that manufactures... Nightmares. Okay, everybody, that's a wrap. Good night. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. 